Hi, it's Nick from Run Testers. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the best Apple Watch apps for running. I want to make this video uh, because the Apple Watch is quite often not seen as a kind of a serious sports watch. And part of that is the battery life and there's nothing we can change about that. It isn't got, hasn't got a very long battery life. But part of it is also the quite you know basic native um, workout tracking app. Uh, and that is quite basic, we'll talk about it in a bit. But the whole strength of the Apple Watch is the massive app store on there. And there are loads of really, really good running apps on there that can basically turn um, the latest edition of the watch into a pretty impressive uh, all-round sports tracker. I'd say in terms of actual tracking your runs, you, the Apple Watch is as good as pretty much any sports watch out there. There are some things it still can't do, like this. One of those is battery life. We already talked about battery life. Uh, and then it doesn't have you know the five-button design you get on a lot of sports watches, although some apps can let you use the buttons. And it also lacks some of the kind of training analysis you're going to get baked into devices from kind of Garmin and Polar and and Coros, but it can do, like I say, a really good job of tracking your runs day to day. I use it as my kind of my main running watch when uh, training for and completing a sub 2.30 marathon this year. I used it a lot over the last year, as well as testing a lot of other sports watches, and I still keep coming back to the Apple Watch just because it obviously does so much outside running. And like I say, with the right apps, it can be a very, very impressive standalone running watch as well. Uh, it's got really good GPS tracking and HR tracking. Accuracy of both of those is up to scratch with kind of any other sports watch I've been testing lately. So yeah, it really does come down to the app you're going to use, and I'm going to go through a few of the apps that you need to know about if you are a runner considering switching from something like a Garmin to the Apple Watch. Uh, but before that, we're going to have a quick look at why the basic workouts app isn't really good enough in my opinion, and also why I don't really tend to use uh, popular apps that are kind of extensions of phone apps, things like Strava and MapMyRun. So the basic workouts app is you know, broadly fine for very casual runs, you know, you kind of an easy run here and there you know it just gets that simple list of stats but it's got a very very small array of running stats for one you can't get things like lap pace you can't put in workouts and follow them on the watch you can take a lap by double tapping the screen but all that does is break your run into segments that you can then see afterwards you don't get info on the current segment you're running things like that so it's a really basic um, app you know, it's nice enough like I say I think it's fine if you're using the Apple Watch as an all-round kind of smartwatch and fitness tracker and just want to kind of log your workouts you'll get decent calorie information that kind of thing but for serious runners, I want a bit more than what you get from it. And that's, I think, the case of all the kind of other apps that you can get on uh, the Apple Watch that are kind of extensions of popular phone apps. So I've tried Strava, I've used RunKeeper in the past, Map My Run, all those kind of things. They're all very basic. Um, you know, they might be good on the phone, but on the Apple Watch, I don't think they're a big step up on the native workouts app, which, like I say, I don't think is very good. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about apps I think can turn the Apple Watch into a proper sports watch, you know, of the standard of things like Garmin and that. Because if you're just using those apps, you're actually getting an experience that's worse than you're going to get on entry-level running watches that cost you know 100 pounds with the apps I'm going to talk about you're getting a top-notch sports tracking experience I promise so uh, let's dive into those now So first up, we have Work Outdoors, which is my favorite running app on the Apple Watch. It's the one I use the most. We've got a full standalone review of Work Outdoors on the channel, so I'll, I'll keep this vaguely brief. But basically, the strength of Work Outdoors is the amount of customization you can do. You can set up loads of data screens on your kind of running workout profile and put any kind of stats you want in there. You can create... Uh, customizable workouts send them to the watch and it will guide you through them on the wrist and within those workouts you can every single step of that workout you can create the stats you want to see at that point so for example in a fast interval I want to see my pace and time left or distance left but in a recovery interval I want to see my heart rate to see it's coming down and you can really you know you can think of everything send it all over to the watch and follow it from your wrist the other massive strength of workout doors is the color maps you get with it you can scroll through these use your fingers to move around but they're better and kind of more useful than the map you're getting on top flight sports trackers in my opinion just because using a touchscreen actually is sometimes more intuitive and easy uh, when it comes to moving around a map and they're very bright uh, obviously with the Apple Watch's screen which is why battery life is so bad uh, um, but yeah you can put routes on there and while you don't get turn by turn directions like you do with some sports watches you do get a very clear route to follow on your wrist with work outdoors you can also set up extra controls that use things like screen taps or the buttons on the side of the watch to do things like take laps pause I think I've got it for like uh, a double tap pauses it a pressing both buttons at once takes a lap and moves me onto a new interval and then three taps opens up my music screen that kind of thing so there's all those little things that make it a little bit easier to 
you know, take control of the app on the run. And another thing I really like about uh, Work Outdoors, it's, it's, it's an app that's constantly developing. The developer is very responsive uh, to requests put to him on the internet, you know, every social media or forums. And I think the next update is likely to have Stride integration. So if you use the Stride foot pod, which we're going to talk more about in this video, you can be able to direct, you're going to be able to integrate it well with Work Outdoors and use that to get better stats uh, on the run. With Work Outdoors, it's also very easy to export your running data either into kind of, you know, things like GPX or Fit files, or you can send it directly to Strava if you want to do that. The app costs $4.99 in the UK and $5.99 in the US. It's, you know, it's a standalone fee when you purchase it and that's just incredible value for an app that if you bought a kind of three, four hundred pound Apple Watch and decided it isn't really good enough for running, spend another five pound or six dollars and it will immediately transform your running experience on the watch. iSmooth Run is the other, I think, really good run tracking app available on the Apple Watch. It's the one I used to use before I migrated to Work Outdoors. Uh, it has a lot of similar features that make it appealing. You can set up multiple data screens on the wrist and pull in all kinds of running stats into there, you know, way beyond the stuff you're getting on the Apple Watch uh, native workouts app. Basically, where I think it falls down slightly compared to Work Outdoors is that it's not as customizable and I don't think the design is quite as nice. Um, there is now a pro subscription that allows you to get more data screens in your running mode, but in, but in general, you only get two and they only can kind of show four or five stats as opposed to work outdoors which has a lot more customization available however ice move runners have a couple of cool features up its sleeve that uh, might make it worth considering for some people for one it connects to bluetooth sensors really well really easily including the stride footboard already um, it also can import workouts from sites like training peaks so if you're using those kind of sites then it's a really useful app to have on your wrist obviously uh, you can also create and import workouts directly from the ice move run app if you're not using other sites to do that for you uh, it has a nice little weekly and kind of week by week uh, log of your run so you can see your kind of distance throughout the week and over the weeks at a glance and it also sends all your workouts to sites like Strava. Like I say in general I think the presentation and the customization offerings fall a little bit short of what you get on Work Outdoors which also has those maps which isn't really an option on iSmooth Run but yeah it's another really good run tracking app that far exceeds what you get from the native workouts app on the Apple Watch. Ice Run is slightly cheaper than Work Outdoors. It's £4.49 in the UK or £5.99 in the US. And then there is a kind of pro monthly or yearly sub that will open up a few more options, though I don't think it's absolutely necessary to get a really good experience from the app. Next up, we've got a fairly new app called U-Race, uh, which is a really simple but effective upgrade on what you're getting from the native Apple Workouts app. It looks quite similar in that you get like a, a list of stats, you know, including all the kind of classics, distance pace, um, average pace. And actually, in terms of that, it is quite basic. You don't then get a whole load of customization options. You can't bring in stats like lap pace yet, which is something that's a bit of a bugbear for me. I do use lap pace a lot. However, it has a very clever second screen, and that's really what makes this app stand out for me. So that second screen has two Two possible modes one is intervals and one is race mode in intervals mode it basically means that when you double tap um, you'll start a new interval on the watch and all the stats you'll see on that second page are the kind of current interval stats so that again a slight upgrade on the basic workouts app where you you can take an interval go for it but you won't see any stats on it while you're running the next one however what i really like is the race mode on you race and the Thing with this is when you double tap in that mode it corrects the distance so say you're running a half marathon and you notice as you go past a kilometer or mile marker that your watch you know distance is out it's wrong so say you go past a 10k marker and you've got 10.3k on your watch it's annoying your distance is wrong if you double tap the watch will snap to the nearest split so it will go back to 10k and on that race page it will correct all your stats so you'll get at correct average pace and a correct estimated finish time for the distance you've put in. So I recently used this at the London Marathon um, and it's just really, really useful, especially early on in a race where in a marathon in particular, you don't want to go too fast. And I could tell like every couple of K that I needed just to correct the distance slightly to make sure I was running at the right pace and not going too fast. And then later on in the race, you're just kind of running on feel. You don't really not necessarily tapping your watch and worrying about your exact pace. You're just trying to get through it. But early on, it's very useful, I think. And I've used a similar feature on Garmin's in the past. It's the first time I've come across it on the Apple Watch. And that's why I think it was really worth flagging this app up. So yeah, for what I kind of consider this for is I use this kind of in partnership with Workout. So Work Outdoors would be my main training app. And I'd use that for all my kind of normal runs. And then on race day, I'll just switch to U-Race, put on the race mode. And I'd use it to kind of be able to correct the distance to make sure if 
you know, to make sure that you know, dodgy GPS sports weren't making my watch essentially useless during the race. It's a free app at the moment. It's quite new. I'd, ex I'd expect updates to come to it, hopefully bringing a few more stats available and just generally expanding what it offers. But actually, the fact it is so simple is quite appealing at the moment as well. But the only other thing is it's slightly buggy at times and there's no direct upload to sites like Strava yet. Although if you use an app called HealthFit, then you can um, grab the data from Apple Health from the U-Race app and upload it to Strava, which is what I did for example, with the marathon. So there's a little bit of a workaround using third-party apps, but there's no direct integration yet. It's the kind of thing I'd expect to come down the line though. Next up, we have the Stride app. And this is a bit different in that this is not a standalone running app for the Apple Watch. You will need a Stride foot pod. And this is gonna set you back a lot of money. It's, it's 199 pounds in the UK or $219. Though there are kind of, it is cheaper if you then also buy a pro membership for the app, which you'll come into. But yeah, either way, it's a substantial outlay for the foot pod, which then enables the Stride Apple Watch app to work. Now, kind of why would you do this? Uh, well, the Stride foot pod is brilliant. If you calibrate it correctly, you're gonna get very, very accurate distance and pace readings from it, but also you're gonna get running power, which is another way essentially to um, pace yourself during training runs. Um, so obviously using pace doesn't always work if it's windy or if you're on a hilly course. And well, heart rate you can use for lots of those kind of things, you know, judge your efforts purely on your heart rate. Sometimes you might not get an accurate heart rate reading on the watch, uh, things like that. Basically power is just another way to gauge your effort during runs. You know, it's very popular in cycling, but it's becoming more popular in running and the stride foot pod opens that all up to you. The app is very nicely done as well. It, you know, you can set up, I think up to five stats on a screen and then you basically you choose the stats you want and then you set the averaging you want on them. So for example, if you want, you know, you can have your total time or you can have the time on a current lap or the time, you know, you can break it up in all kinds of different ways. Uh, and then obviously there's obviously big fields for running power, which has its own special screen within the app. If, you know, it's a stride pod, you're, you're probably gonna be using running power a little bit. And even if you're not, like I always used to just, I always just used to use the stride pod just for accurate kind of pacing and distance measurements. You can get all that from the app and it syncs directly to Strava as well. However, there are a few problems I've had with stride recently that I wanted to flag up here, which is why I don't tend to actually use the stride pod on my runs so much. One is that I test a lot of running shoes and I'm swapping between them all the time. And I have found, especially when moving from a normal training shoe to like a carbon shoe, I need to calibrate the stride pod kind of each time and I'm changing my paces a lot. It's sometimes the distance measurements will go wrong. So I think in terms of the actual pod's accuracy when it comes to distance and pace, it's going to be at its best if you're the kind of runner who sticks to one or two pair of shoes i will say that also the stride app and the pod can be a little bit buggy on the apple watch if you're carrying your phone with you as well like you kind of the bluetooth signals get a bit mixed up and actually one way to get around that is to use the iSmooth run app instead of the native stride app even with the stride pod because it has a special setting for watch and iphone when you're carrying both and using the stride pod so even if you are getting a stride pod, I would be tempted to use the iSmooth run app as I think it's a bit more kind of data rich as well and slightly less buggy at times. And also when Work Outdoors does support the stride uh, sensor, which I think is an upcoming update, I'd probably be tempted to go back to Work Outdoors and feed the stride, the stride data into that instead. Uh, although the stride native app is pretty good. And if you have a premium membership, you can pull in all kinds of training plans and workouts from you know stride themselves, but also training peaks and final surge and others you know that's quite nice you know it is a very data rich environment and that will please people who like the stride pod maybe you're coming to running from a multi-sport kind of background there'll be a lot more au fait with power you know it's a nice app it works well and the pod is really great just you need to make sure you have calibrated it correctly i think uh, to get the best results Okay, so the last app I'm going to mention is called Tempo, which um, is, again, something a little bit different. So you've also got those kind of run tracking apps in Ice Move Run and Work Outdoors. You've got the racing app in U-Race, and then the Stride app is obviously kind of its own thing. And then Tempo is a kind of a data log app. It's similar in a sense to Strava, but I find it, you know, it really does a good job of presenting all the data on your runs in a way that's quite fun and makes digging into all the stats a little bit more enjoyable. Basically what it does, it kind of pulls your running data in from Apple's health app, and then it shows it all um, with loads of colorful graphs and calendar view and week by week view. And within each run, you can see lots of extra stats like, oh, your fastest mile split within that run was this. And I just really like it. There's a lot of data there and you can have a lot of fun digging into it and spending too much time looking at running data. It's of just getting on with your day which is what i probably should be doing so yeah it's a nice neat little app and it has really nice complications and this is one thing i'd probably almost pay for by itself was that 
you can get complications that show your kind of weekly running distance, your monthly running distance, or your yearly running distance um, on the face of the Apple Watch. And I like having my weekly distance to hand. It's just um, something I like to see. It's quite a, it's a good all-round app for you know those who really like to dig into their data um, after their runs. And it's something that you don't really get natively with the Apple Watch either. It's a paid app, but you pay kind of yearly. It's nine pounds forty-nine in the UK or nine dollars ninety-nine in the US. that's it guys that's a, a roundup of a kind of the best running apps for the apple my favorite running apps for the apple watch it's probably a fair <laughs> description of what they are but i do think they are the best uh please do jump in the comments if you've got any other apps i actually found work outdoors and the tempo app from comments on here when we've talked about the apple watch in the past so yeah i love hearing about apple watch apps please like subscribe ring the little bell and we'll see you next time